Hey everybody, another Wednesday, another live stream. Welcome. Give me a second here and we will get everyone in here and get moving. Angel, thank you for joining. Give me a second. Can you hear me, guys? <laughs> yeah. Let me take these out. How's it going, guys? Uh, Angel, you can hear me? Me. Oh, I can hear Mike now. Right. Obviously, there's something wrong with my AirPods. So we will go without. AirPods. Cool. Well, thanks for joining All right. me. Um, have a whole bunch of people come in. Russian Champion, thank you for joining. Shitler Media, thank you for joining. Um, trying to get my Robocop posters. In. Yes, please. <laughs> Let's talk about that at some point too, huh? <laughs> well, I'm like I'm doing this on purpose. Okay. Yes. Uh, Jojo, th thank you for joining. Chaos Guitars, thank you for joining. Uh, Harper Engineering, thank you for joining. All right, Whoa. Angel says now she hears both. Kitty Mom two seven three, thank you for joining. Marie, thank you for joining. Katie, thank you for joining. All the people, thank you for joining. George, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. I forgot. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, Crystal is more than welcome to come on here too. I'm sorry about that. We can get her on here on a separate yeah, time. Try my head. Try my headphones again. Do you hear me? Yeah, I can still hear you. All right, cool. This makes it a lot easier. Josh. I'm watching the Sixers. We're doing this all at the same time. Like, yeah. yes. Yep. Yeah. Josh Berg, thank you for joining. <laughs> uh, I will just rattle off names as we go. Um, I appreciate everyone. Josh Burke here. is watching? Yes. Very excited. Josh on a, a great 11 fest that was a lot of fun and it was well it, uh, attended so yeah I hope it raised a lot of money Very for cool. student 11 yeah and the Bethlehem area public library so awesome. the Bethlehem area public library is like sneakily the, the underground music for real center of the Lehigh Valley right now they're like trans and, and if you if you want to laugh about that like check out what they're doing like it, it's really interesting Josh is great um they, they have a studio like you could go in there and and just record tomorrow you know reserve time i did that yeah. walk out with uh yeah yeah it's awesome yep so i uh, actually went in there last time around the, well maybe maybe between christmas and new year's last year to just try to throw some uh vocals down just to get some demos together and it was a great experience sure yeah. All right. Um, right i'll just read something off the top and then we'll get started in here and then if anyone has any questions right. for george you could throw them in the comments at any point and we will get to them if you see anybody you want to shout yeah. out or read off feel free go ahead yeah all right Hello. my wife when she joins but yeah go ahead okay. i'm sorry i, I interrupted no, you already okay. and uh, like i said before she's more than welcome to jump on too at any point um uh, from a different account or whatever uh all right Hello and welcome to the Bellwether Ritual live stream where we discuss music, the local Lehigh Valley PA scene, bands, social media, marketing, and more. Today is Wednesday. What is today? The seventh, the fifteenth. I'm sorry. My name is Mike, and I'm the vocalist guitarist of Bellwether Ritual. Hope you all had a good week. Just wanted to say we wrapped up our last show at Eleven Fest last Saturday at the Bethlehem Area Public Library. A lot of fun. Uh, a lot of uh, people coming out and um, saw a lot of familiar faces, which was great. So yeah, congrats to uh, the library and Josh on that one. And tonight, our guest is George of Lehigh Valley with Love. Lehigh Valley with Love uh, Media is an award-winning family-owned boutique digital media company founded in 2015. They have been named best podcast, best blogger, 
best news blog and more in the Lehigh Valley. We'll talk to him all about uh, that and more. George, welcome to the stream. How are you doing tonight, man? Great. Thank you for having me. This is, uh, this is fun. It's funny. Like I'm usually, I'm, I'm setting like my phone up against like all these different things to make sure I have everything yeah. in frame. It's fantastic. It's a bit of, no, I love it, man. It's a, it's a bit of a bummer to um, Instagram has to go. You have to run it through the app uh, on the phone, unfortunately. But um, yeah, and um, it's great to have you kind of on the other end of the uh, the interview yeah. process. And you do a lot of the. Oh, it's great. Yeah, so I appreciate you jumping on here. Um, let's see here, right off the top, anything you want to plug? I know you have a lot that you have going on. Is there anything you want to plug right off the top? Let everyone know about. Uh, you know what I want to plug? Christmas. <laughs> like it, it's it's. I know, like man, it, it seems like COVID was a million years ago and two years ago, but like Christmas is back and the lehigh valley is famous for it and i i think it's time that we uh get back into it you know downtown bethlehem on the north side and the south side is going to be hopping with it and, and you know all the other places in the lehigh valley nazareth of course like we're, we're back at it and it's exciting very cool it is the christmas city uh for sure and um i think you have there's um i know he had mentioned a couple of events this weekend one that i'm going to try to get to is nashville meets bethlehem at steel stacks which right. I thought was yeah cool. yeah um all right great well uh, let's see we, yeah go ahead no no we, we um so yeah nashville meets bethlehem and i'm gonna like do this horrible service in, in talking about it um but gerard longo from he used to be Lehigh Valley Underground. Um, now, you know, coming back from Nashville, they're putting on a, a Nashville style show. And what that means is more it's like singer songwriter. So they explain um, the song b before or after they play it. And like Beautiful Distortion, I think they've been on here oh, before, yeah, maybe, or sure. you guys know them. Yeah. Like they'll be on, there's so many great Billy Bauer, yep. uh, Carly Commando, they'll be participating in it. So it's a really, unique show but I, I think people should who are interested in local music should at least give it a look go to steelstacks.org and at least check it out yeah there you go um russian champion says uh can you fly bobby i guess that's an inside joke maybe <laughs> that is a robocop reference oh. <laughs> that's a robocop reference oh man I'm a, I oh, that God. I'm just like it's i'm the biggest robocop fan you're ever gonna meet uh, and yeah. it's like i have the weirdest stuff um, you fly, this is from <laughs> this is from like this is a uh, from the uh, Japanese <laughs> toy release <laughs> from awesome. RoboCop three in like 1993. You know, some people get into Star Wars, and it's totally fine. I just got into RoboCop. Yeah. It's all over the place. So, how old were you when you first saw that movie? <laughs> it's so sad. Like my dad, who's a great guy, would be like, "You let him watch like 1987." came out That's so you know i i was i felt like eight or nine Same. i don't think i would let, allow my yeah. daughter to watch that no now way. um but going back on it like it was such a it's such an influential film for me and it was mostly not because of the violence but more the satire and just the way that the uh yeah. paul verhoven oh he's so put it together I, 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 yeah even his other movie even like fun. total recall with schwarzenegger it was great i thought um just so yeah, I, I'm just a, I'm a fan of that style, yeah, and sure. you know how some people, like I said, some people get into Star Wars. I just got into RoboCop, and I like even the garbage movies. I like the TV shows. I like it all. I love Very it. Cool. <laughs> I remember seeing that when I was really young too, thinking it was something completely different. I was just like blown away by the <laughs> violence of it. Yeah, it was just like wow. I just sure was watching this. And then watching it later, and then you, you see all the layers in it. At least for me, like that's when you kind of get into the depth of the actual movie, and it's much more than just so. That. What's really wild about it too is ah, there's a toy I have on the wall. Um, the video game just came out, and when oh, I just yeah. completed that, I just platinum it. Yeah, so I'm a forty something year old man who just downloaded the RoboCop game, <laughs> platinum it. I had a fantastic time. I really enjoyed it. I recommend people. Checking it out. Do you ever uh, do any like live streams with that kind of stuff at all? I do. If you look at, um, if you search George Wacker on YouTube, you can find you know my my dumb YouTube stuff for video games. Oh, but yeah, no, I just I love it. That's something for myself. I just I've always enjoyed video games, and if they're gonna release a RoboCop one, 
I'm definitely going to spend money on it. Yeah, for sure. I think I'm uh, pretty good review, <laughs> yeah. too. It's great. Oh, it's good. I, I didn't know you did the um, uh, video game streaming. That's cool. I'll give you a follow right now. Well, listen, um, it's not, you know, it, it was more like during I have a daughter who's seven. She loves Roblox. Like, we'll do stuff like that. And it, it's more, I don't know, just kind of like experimenting with the genre, I guess, you know. Yep. Um, but, but it's, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I even dug like what was his other movies? Um, what was the alien, the bug one? Uh, uh, something soldiers. Mm, I can't remember it off the top, but that was really good too. Um, Varicon. oh man, it, like it's funny when when like you blank on it, and I know I know exactly because I saw the movie like recently. I know. Um, uh, it'll come to me. Uh, Varites says, "Remember when RoboCop <laughs> shut that dude's dick off?" <laughs> Yes, I do. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so what I usually like What's to do... What's funny, in the game, you can aim at the guy's nice. dick, and he'll, he, does the whole, uh, he does the whole animation. <laughs> I guess it's kind of like is, something you got to get It's at. Starship Troopers. Starship Troopers. Um, Thank you. Star, Starship Troopers, and what's great about Starship Troopers and Robocop, like, Paul Verhoeven didn't write those. Those are both based on different scripts so paul verhoeven came in and put his directorial you know stamp on those i don't know if you could do that today yeah yeah it's crazy how different it is now um but good stuff i, I would recommend if anyone hasn't seen any paul verhoeven stuff please go check it out because it's it's just uh great multi-layered depth uh, yeah. movies tied into these kind of cr crazy action. it's weird it, it's americana <laughs> yeah it is like it's weird to think about it, but it really is. It's like the mo it's like the Western when you were in the eighties thinking about the Western. That's what RoboCop oh, is now. You know, sure. it's it's, it's never and stopped. He's from Europe somewhere, right? So he, he has like this he, kind of outside. He's Danish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think he's Danish. Yeah. So it's always that fantastic, interesting outside view uh, can be a lot more accurate than you would even think of. For sure. All right. So what I usually like to do off the top um, this. Uh, I don't know. We've we've kind of had a lot of different guests on here, but um, music is always something we come back to. I know you're a musician and uh, a music fanatic as well. So, yeah. um, what I usually the, some of the first questions I like to ask off the top, music wise, and we'll get into all different sorts of things here. But um, was there like a person in your life or a band or a song that really kind of kicked everything off for you and really got you like into music? Yeah, I mean. Um... You know, I owe it to my my family for being really into good stuff, in my <laughs> opinion. And, and, and you know, I think it's different for everybody. But like, my mom and dad were into the Police. Um, you know, Led Zeppelin. My brother, then, who's ten years older than me, was into Van Halen and all that stuff. And and I think it really, for me, it clicked when I heard Faith No More oh. for the first time. Um, and then Angel Dust. To 92 when that came out with, with Faith No More and Mike Patton and I was kind of like whoa wait a minute like this music is a lot of different things and it's not necessarily just rap and rock and, and what have you and I grew up in a really small town so it was interesting to you know kind of maybe listen to music through that lens in the 90s when it was like cassettes being you know <laughs> cassettes and, and uh cds kind of being trucked in from yeah. from wherever and getting into grunge and pearl jam and, and all that sort of stuff but for me it was really you know faith no more um in my opinion was a, the band that really kicked it off for me and jump started me on my really appreciation and love for music very cool what what album was it real thing or was it a real yeah. thing but it, um uh, angel dust in my again in my opinion yeah is maybe the the best album oh, that's my and favorite for sure yeah close to like yeah yeah I clearly there's pros and cons on it but for me it just blew it away just the musicianship being able to look at song structure and say nah I'm just gonna do something else you're right and then all these other bands uh, took from that and I mean and that's music in general but um, for me it was it was that it was Faith and More for sure. Yeah, you know, they were so ahead of their time, too. I think we take a little bit of it for granted now where, like, we have the Internet and there's basically the world is our musical oyster. 
and we can pick all these different things and our playlists are all over the place but they were like way ahead of their time in that regard and I, you know everybody's influenced by everybody so it's like the you're the pixies or or what have you but for me that's why now is so interesting um being i was just thinking about this earlier today you know being a a 40 something year old guy raised on pearl jam it's good stuff and led zeppelin and and um but now finding new music and music that i really enjoyed that isn't just like hey it's a new band i like but usurping some of those older bands that i grew up on for sure whereas it's kind of easy to fall into that hey i'm only going to listen to acdc <laughs> forever <Yeah. laughs> right um so yeah no i've been finding a lot of that I, it, for me that's been really exciting there's a lot of bands from when COVID has started till now that that i've become fans of and then spent a lot of money on mm. too you know yeah is it, buying their vinyls or, yeah. yeah anyone that you want to like just throw out there for people that you, you um shared one with me that i really enjoyed the maybe about a week ago well i'll say my favorite bit <laughs> um maybe of all time at this point it's the viagra boys mm -hmm. if you have not heard of viagra boys i highly recommend it i know that the name may be off-putting for some people but if you're looking at ska and at its pinnacle of what it could be and i hate ska but like <laughs> what it's like the most perfect uh synergy is is really such an exciting band the viagra boys please listen to them um cleopatra mm. which is a band from canada it's a drum and bass band cleopatra teenage wrist out of california um patron out of france which is more of a jeez, uh, like a, a grungy type band mm -hmm. And, and ben, uh, Benny Main and Tom the Mailman, who are rappers, who have you told me 10 years ago, 40-year-old George, you, you're going to be listening to these new rappers and be like, that's insane. You know, I have a seven-year-old daughter. I'm not going to be doing that. <laughs> so that's been really cool about Spotify. It's like introducing me to other stuff through um, listening to the yeah, stuff I enjoy. For sure. That's actually what I was going to follow up with. Is there a platform that you like that? Um, you're discovering all the stuff on, but it sounds like Spotify for sure. Well, I hate, I hate that, you know, you've been, I guess anybody's been reading this stuff. You put, you know, the artists are getting nothing. However, I look at it too. It's like, these are bands that I never would have found. There's zero chance I would have found them. And it gives me an opportunity to purchase a vinyl or, um, and I've done that a few, more than a few times, probably five, um, since COVID hit, probably five or six times times and purchase either merch or vinyl because of being able to be exposed to these bands yeah. who otherwise I, how would i have found them i'm not sure you know i think that's a, a great point and i think people get hung up sometimes on that kind of stuff like oh they don't pay artists or they pay them like fractions. they don't this it's true but but they also do it, it provide a service that it, it does exactly what you're saying which is just right. be able to reach people you would never ever be able to reach. Well, I think, and that's where we, we have to take the responsibility, right? So it's like if you see a band that you like on Spotify and you're like, oh man, they're getting zero cents per view, well then buy their vinyl yeah. that they have right there. And that's what we've done. Um a band Bad Nerves is a punk band out of London. They were so great like I bought their vinyl with the uh liner notes that he wrote I, I, it wasn't crazy. Like maybe it was eighty bucks, but for that band, I think it was for them. Like that's a big deal, right? Right. Um, so th those kind of things where you can take that, you can use the technology and maybe be mad about it, but you can take the next step yeah. and spend some money. Yep. You just have to embrace those kind of things and roll with it and figure out how else you can generate some kind of income with it, rather than look at it as a negative thing all the time. For sure. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm I'm I'm, not, I'm gonna apologize if I pronounce your name wrong right off the top because I always do this. But Ver Veritas says late '80s movies output is unmatched. I tend to agree with that. <laughs> they don't make them like that anymore for sure. Um, Doug Bame, thank you for joining. Amy K, thank you for joining. Kinsey King, thank you for joining. He says, "Yo guys, what's up, man? How you doing?" Yeah, I gotta share off some of my. Nice. I'm gonna share some of my Robocop. <laughs> this is the only time. 
Maybe anybody will care. So I got this off a of Wish. This is the Wish uh -huh. Robocop. Like, literally. It's good. What uh, did you think of the remake? I mean, I mean, it was okay. I was happy that it existed. You know what I mean? Yeah. And but I get, get, I get why... I, I'm sorry, I'm running around. I, I Listen, as a Robocop fan, it's not like... Or it could be like it could be worse. If you're a Star Wars fan, it feels like they ruined it. Right? They just saturated it. Yeah, yeah. As a RoboCop fan, that new video game is crazy. It's so good because it's it's like a PS3 game. Hmm. Like it's not this open world thing. It's like you're uh, you got to go downtown and, and you're 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 held to downtown, but you have to do all those missions. Um, so for me, that was like a lot of fun. Did like, they base it off? one of the movies or was it like a, they based, another based it off of like if you've ever seen if anybody's ever seen robocop uh three is really bad <laughs> uh they based it the the video game is basically as if robocop three never happened and it happened yeah. after robocop uh, uh two I here's another thing i do have say check i have the novelization of robocop no, which i purchased off it, ebay yeah i didn't even know it existed yeah, I mean, no, <laughs> who would? Nobody cares. It's weird. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> well, a little bit. You know what? Wait, here. I have it. We've got you know, Robocop Ultra Police. That's the one with the, uh, the, the, the cap that you can hear it. Yeah. So They had a good set. I, I'm too, I think, right? Yeah. Gotten into those at all? Sure, yeah, I've read them. But again, it's just like as anybody gets into anything. Like, I just happen to get into Robocop, like, someone else would get into the Yankees. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, usually I would follow up that question with things like, um, well, I guess. Can you maybe talk a little bit about um, Lehigh Valley with Love and how that started yeah, sure. and, and where that came from? Yeah, I mean, oh, nobody cares. Um, I was, you know, I, I was an English major in college. I worked in PR, and you know, in the like 2008, I started a blog, like when blogging was popular. And that blog, we made fun of local news that did well, and then out of that you know, social media grew and uh, Leah Valley with Love became popular for some reason. Like we, you know, did some good stuff mm -hmm. um, and we were able to uh, parlay that into a business. Um, we've been very fortunate to have a podcast uh, and, and, you know, many events and, and partners and clients that we work with. Um, so, it's been a, a lot of fun, and, and it's something to show you that the Leah Valley is large enough where, you know, a small company like ourselves can exist among other marketing companies as well. Like, you know, we're not the only one that can make this happen. There are so many clients within the Leah Valley, so there's many people that uh, can do it. For sure. And I really think that exploded over the pandemic, actually. Um, we had a lot For of sure. yeah, people move into the area. And uh, it's only kind of really gone up from there. Um, was there something in yeah. particular, like you, you talked about the blog, what were the things right. that like, I, I see it very similar to bands in a lot of ways where you're like, you're doing something because you love it and um, you want to put out good content and that stuff. Was there something in, that originally got traction that you're like, oh, this is really starting to work and that you kind of nurtured or was it like you <clears throat> uh, marketed it in a yeah. certain way? Mm -hmm. yeah, I Again, I think um, during that time period, like to go back to 2007, 2008, you know, there wasn't really alternative news source. And that's something we tried to do. But not like we tried to do like, hey, we have a staff. It was like me making fun of stuff. Mm -hmm. But we're still trying to provide like a, another vantage point from it. And I don't know, I, I, I think that's something that's valued. And I, I see now there's so many news outlets in the Lehigh Valley right now. There's, if you look at it, what, what it, the ecosystem of what it was 10 years ago compared to now with Lehigh Valley News and Lehigh Valley Live, um, for us, it was just really being able to, to tap into the Lehigh Valley zeitgeist and the social media um, and put out content 
and contests and stuff like that that people really enjoyed. And listen, we were lucky and, and we're still lucky and it was a lot of fun and it's, and it's still a lot of fun. Uh, I heard a good saying, luck is uh, preparedness meeting. Oh, now I forget it. Damn it. Um, but basically, it's it's luck isn't just kind of a random pick of the of the hat. It's a lot of hard work, too. So I know you say that, but I know you put a lot of hard work into it, too. So um, yeah, you, I, I've known you for a long time. And it's been great to kind of right. watch you grow over the uh, those years. So opportunity. Thank you. No, I'd appreciate that. And, and same way. And, and, you know, likewise. And it, it's just been the funny thing is, it is is hard work and, that, and that's the thing like i get some people who sometimes get mad at us they're like oh you get this and that for nothing and it's like no man like we started from literally zero like you see the morning call yeah. or leah valley uh news or, or what have you and they started from people with resources we came from <laughs> literally just writing a blog making fun of some things and you know we made it wrong sometimes and right some other time uh and now being able to to, to be completely honest with you, give back to our community, um, share things with our community. I am blessed to be able to do that, provide for my family. To even to be talking to you tonight about this is nuts. Like, it, it's really cool. And yeah. For sure. I think you just nailed it. And this, this is what took me the longest time to get. And um, I know a lot of people, even in the ch uh, chat right now, like um, Dave from Chaos Guitars, he preaches this all the time it really is all about community and making those connections with people and oh, um yeah. yeah well i mean i slept on it for a long time because i was coming from the music side of things it's like no you just gotta be you gotta be really good and make really good music and do all this stuff and it's like that's only a fraction of it really like you have to go out and meet people and um you know there was a um i feel like in the valley maybe when i was growing up because i was born and raised here i moved out for a number of years and came back but i did feel like it sometimes it was a little bit like everyone kind of stayed to themselves a little bit more and there wasn't mm -hmm. there wasn't as sure. like um you know you're, you're cheering for your, the other guy to all or a girl to also succeed and and you do it together where i think that really has come together in a great way um i don't know maybe the last yeah i mean i i think the, the Lehigh Valley is perpetually just not Philadelphia, right? Or, or not New York City. Like, you're, you're always like, hey, if I... So, like, that machine um, of music, like, if you're in the Philadelphia scene, if you live there, like, it's a different thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I have no advice on it. It's like, I, I had a uh, band in... You can find us on Spotify. It's Ransom the Captive. Uh, I had a band in college. I remember that. Right, but it's, it's like it's more like fun. So like, how does a band make it from here? You know, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But there are more venues, and, and then we have some classic ones that are honestly. Uh, look at the Fun House, dude. That that is nationally Absolutely. renowned. Absolutely. That is a place that we are gifted to have at this point. Godfrey Daniels, right next door. Right next door. Yeah, it's crazy. We are completely different in terms of. Like NBC News, like somebody has to come out and do. You have the, the craziest, you know, underground punk. They're gonna allow whatever at the fun house <laughs> next to Godfrey Daniels, one of the only listening rooms in America that is left. Uh, and by listening room, I, I mean, you know, a place where artists come to have their music listened to quietly, and maybe they then tell you about them. It is very rare, and they're next door to each other, and that's just one part of our Lehigh Valley. It's insane. Yeah, which <laughs> I never realized um, why the Fun House started so late until um, maybe right? I think it was earlier this year. But it's because of Godfrey Daniels. They run to about ten, and then Fun House takes over from ten because they they, they share a wall. The, Crazy. The Fun House is insane. And then also, I was looking at like even because they're just disconnected, but like Zellner Center, yep. right? They just had the bake the bacon boys, so they just had Neil Gaiman. So you're talking about yeah. if you look at a map, you know, the fun house compared to where um the Zellner Center is. I don't know, it's four hundred meters, like you can walk there in three minutes. And these are places that are having, you know, underground music and, and great stuff. And then there's Neil Gaiman and there's the Bacon Brothers and, and stuff. And then when I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just excited about it, our area in yeah. general. And it's more about 
you also buying into that. And and I think that, yeah, I'm not selling anything, but I'm just saying that we have, there are good venues if you were a band compared to maybe when you and I were 20, where we yeah. would be playing. I think there are opportunities. For sure. I think you, you know, what's been really great to see too. You're, where are you from? Honesdale or up in yeah. Wampawpack? Yeah. Which in, for people who don't know is Lake Wampawpack. My, my town had less people than I think my, my neighborhood yeah. has. Right? Which was, so this is what I loved seeing in you that you just hit on there, right there. Right. So you're coming from out, uh, from out of the, Le the Lehigh Valley. And then you come in and be like, oh my God, look at all this great stuff here. It made people like me who grew up here took a lot of things for granted to be like, oh, you know, this guy's right. We do have a lot, we're equidistant between New York and Philly. We have Jersey right over the border. Like it's it's a great spot to be. So that really kind of yeah. changed my mind about it. Yeah. There's negatives to, to living in New York City. I mean, there's negatives to living. And I think there's less negatives now living where we are in fact, there's, there's a lot more positives. I don't want to get into like affordable housing and all that, but it's, it's probably, uh, maybe, it's less expensive to live here than some of the suburbs in some of the cities. But those those scenes are now post-COVID. Maybe I can hear from you. Maybe I can ask you as, as an interviewer. Do you see some of those underground scenes coming up again? Post COVID, like places like the, the Sokols, for example, yes. in, in South Bethlehem, like that seems to be to me the new fun house from 20 years ago. Yep. Like it's, it's very organic. It's not forced. It's bands playing. They have wrestlers. Like this is a thing, right? Yep. Actually, I've been dying to play ah. there for sure. Um, that one. But you haven't played I, there yet? Um, is Mike Cunningham w watching? Mike, you got a book? Yeah, there you, you guys. Go. Thank you. Um, yeah, the um, secret art space was one like yeah. uh, that kind of came up at one point, but then kind of you know whatever happened there. I wasn't around for that. I was actually in Philadelphia for those years. It was weird because yeah. I left, went to Philly, like got a job, did band stuff down there, and then when I came back, I was like, oh my god, there's a scene here. Like the Second Avenue sure. thing kind of took off. Um, you know when when that was happening. And then I do really feel like it's picking back up again. And a lot of that is from the pandemic um, migration, I guess is that what you would call it. Uh, but, well, it's so funny. Like I would look at my phone to talk about this, but we, I, I did a thing with uh, Carly Commando and all those guys at the yeah. Ice oh, House. Um, oh, for sure, yeah. With into the industry thing. Like you should be interviewing him. Like, uh, I feel horrible. I should, but like that, that's where the, all, all those bands that were there, um, was it Antarctica? Uh, we're um, from Antarctica. Yeah, I, Seth Witcher. Yeah, we're from Antarctica. Uh, Seth Witcher. Matt from like, forgive me, guys. Yeah. yeah, I'm not trying to be rude. No, no, no. But like that's that's the future because those are the guys. Listen, when we were 20, if they had an event at the Ice House, we're like, hey, bands come out and DIY, and nobody would have came. And they did that at the Ice House. And they had, I don't know, two hundred people. Yeah. That was insane. Yeah, with so, Carly Commando and 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 Slingshot Dakota, um, you know, industry band. Like I know these guys are are, are friendly, but come on, like they're nationally successful. That's amazing. It was an awesome event. Um, I didn't even get a chance to talk to you there, but yeah, it was great. Um, a great place to just get to know like people in the scene and and. Um, Radio stations were there, um, yeah. Just to, and just to hear how uh, you ran a great panel too, and um, just to hear how people got to where they were and what they had to do, or you know, I know a lot of people talk about oh, there's this lucky break kind of thing, but really, um, it is a lot of hard work to that point where there's that tipping point, and then um, yeah, it can kind of flow a little bit easier. But uh, how'd you get involved in that? You just want to quick talk about that a little. That was such a great event. You know, like, because we're so annoying and we're on social media all the time. So they're like, hey, George, can you do this? And I say, uh, yes. No, honestly, they, they contacted me and it's a great event. And the Ice House is, I guess I can say it's a soft spot for me. Like, I love that venue. Yeah, it is great. Um, I don't think a lot of people know it. it's a city, a Bethlehem city venue. It's a place that you can, you know, contact 
the city and rent out for a very affordable uh, uh, fee. And we did some comedy stuff there. And so to see it being embraced that way uh, is amazing. Like, I, I love it. I love that there is a current scene as I'm like, you know, putting my seven year old to bed. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's like that. You know, Twenty year olds are out there kicking butt. Yeah, man. It feels good. It's good. You know, I don't need to be. I'm. I gotta be up at six tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think um, I was a little concerned at one point too because things like um, I mean, not concerned, but I was like, is this gonna keep going? Like, um, say guitar based music or um, things like that. You know, um, uh, electronic music got big yeah go ahead yeah well that's what the viagra boys oh my god i wish i could like put this in the viagra boys are ga on fucking steroids it's so good it's so good um i i haven't found a band one one thing that here's something this is a phenomenon um and we're the same age so this bothers me is people who get to their third Thirties or forties or whatever, and they're at an event, and it's like, yeah, I put on the same thing. It's like the same thong, song or same band yeah. you've been listening to for the last twenty years of your life. It's like, oh, I I liked Metallica, so I'm going to listen to that album forever. Yeah. It's horrible. Um, so my I guess my point is the Viagra Boys and bands like that uh, it, it is giving me like I, I don't know. And here's some new freaking music and it's great and you know what maybe it's not better than whatever but who cares <laughs> it, it's it's new and it's fresh and it's great and, and it's really fantastic and that's been something new for me that i'm kind of like getting happy about like trying new music and being open to it and not worrying about old music yeah and uh it's so subjective anyway like uh who's to say who's better than what or it's just like whatever you connect with and whatever it is, it's weird i think it's i think it's like an insecurity thing i, don't know. I would agree yeah 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 I, I don't well you know i'm not i don't want to call any any no i'm not saying anyone's insecure no, 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 i'm just no. saying i'm saying like um there's certain radio stations like i've grown up with uh, that maybe in the valley or not that kind of had that same playlist over and over so that kind of gets like embedded into your brain and and um maybe the the um courage it takes to you know go out and listen to new stuff or say that you like things that are different or whatever uh, might be a little harder i'm not sure if that's true or not but um, i read and, and people can check me on this i read a study you know, read a Study. I saw an article about a study that said, you know, when people get to be 30, 35, they, they're kind of done. Like they, they've been like, hey, my band's Pearl Jam yeah. and my album is Versus. And you know what? Anything happens after this, you're wrong. Yeah. And it doesn't matter anymore. Um, and that's interesting to me because that sucks. Like that's like I, I love Pearl Jam and I, and I bring those albums up because I, I love them, but I love getting into new music you know during especially during this covid time because we were forced to have to put it online and then you're also being like hey well that doesn't make money for these artists how are you going to do it well here are the links to buy their you know their 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 vinyls and whatnot and here you go like yeah i'm just saying when you have the ability to support these artists that's the argument and um, I was happy to be able to do that. Yep. And uh, Angel says it's also a comfort thing. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, yeah, like what sure. you like. There was a time, um, I think it was the early 2000s, where um, the music industry was kind of collapsing because they were basically, everything was spilling onto the internet and everyone was file sharing and all that kind of stuff. Where right. I was like, I'm going to go, instead of trying to keep up, I'm, I'm going to try to keep up too with the new stuff that's coming out, but I also want to go backwards too. Have you ever had a moment like that where like, I just want to go like deep dive into the 60s, the 50s, like see how far back I can go and see what else I like? You know what's so funny is you say 60s or 50s, you go back to like 95 and, and see how that feels, right? Because I think when you say 50s or 60s, you're the same age as me. Like we don't know. Um, what that felt like but we know what 95 
felt like. I, I know when you give me a Sugar Ray, you know, song, it's going to make me not mad at Sugar Ray, but like happy about that moment. I, I, just, think, I, I just think it's, it's very um, dependent uh, on the person, but it's, it's interesting that there's so much more because there wasn't as much music in the 60s. So when you're a kid in the 60s, there's like five albums. When you're a kid in 95, there's a million albums. And now when you're a kid in 2023, like it's literally every album that ever existed. Well, that's interesting too. You know, how do you kind of share that stuff with each other? I don't know. Well, one thing I put in my notes, and for any, like, I don't know if anybody cares about this, but I just, I just want to make sure that I mention it. My sister was, was playing a softball game in Honesdale in like 1990. It must, whatever this year this came out, I think it's 92. And I walked downtown to Honesdale and I bought the Candlebox yeah. album. And, and it was on CD and it was just like, these guys are fucking rad as shit. Yeah. And that album was rad as shit. Yeah. And it was just a, a really, you know, a really interesting moment that I just don't know. I, I don't mean that it, like, it, it's bad if, if, if people don't feel that again. But it's something that I just don't know if, if the next generation will get that exact moment. Or what will it be for them? You know, there's a bit of like the mystique too that the internet has kind of taken away because there's so much information about those bands out there my first i mean I, I went to see like sesame street live and shit when i was like a real little kid but my first like big show was nirvana at stabler arena in lehigh on uh, lehigh you that show? i think i have the ticket still i have to go find, try to find it but i was gonna go try to dig it up yeah that was you yeah like that that's a like that's a youtube legend yeah, show yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was just watching yeah. it the other day, actually. Yeah. Well, you um, parents brought your parents are good people. Like, that's insane. Oh, yeah. That's they, well, I mean, we we did it all ourselves. We they, they were just like have a good time. <laughs> but yeah. Um, but still, like they, at that time, like to to be thinking about that. That is really yeah. You know. Oh no doubt. Shout out my parents for sure. But uh, like standing in line, like <laughs> uh, I guess like not you know what you see on basically it's mtv at the time like whatever they are showing you is kind of what you have you have some magazines that you could potentially buy and read up on uh some interviews or something like that then you like wait in line um there's all this anticip uh, anticipation that builds the lights go down like the first song explodes everyone goes crazy like it's gonna it, it's kind of hard pressed to get all those things to, to line up anymore in this day and age I'll tell you, can I, oh, it's such a good segue. <laughs> I saw, I saw Pucifer at oh, yeah, cool. Wind Creek. And so to what you're talking about, I get it. Holy, holy, holy shit. Um, now I didn't see Tool at PPL, which I'm sure was, I was gonna just as insane. But I, I like, it's more my style. I know I love Tool too, but um, holy crap. What an incredible performance. It, it just, I don't know. It was something like when you go, when you leave, and you're like, I need to make sure I tell someone else about yeah. this. You know, that's how you felt. Um, and to have, have that in Bethlehem again and, like, near us, it's insane. So, I agree. Sorry, I'm like. Yeah, you're good. And the fact that PPL Center has tools. What are, we, blew me away, what are they man. complaining about? What are we complaining about anymore? I, I agree. Like, didn't they have Metallica as well? It's like you got everything you want, minus um, having Croc Rock back, which would probably be. Yeah. I actually saw Metallica at the Allentown Fairgrounds, too. They were so loud. Like, like my ears were, I, they definitely did some hearing damage because my ears were ringing for like two weeks straight after what, that one. What? What's the best show you ever saw? Oh. Or, or I, I guess. What's your most What's your most favorite show? Oh man, I, I mean, I guess it would have to be the Nirvana one, just because there's so much history there. Yeah, and it just made such a big impression on me. Um, Live also played um, Stabler Primus. I saw at Stabler. Yeah. I think the yeah. the live one that's the reason Live sticks out is because it's the first time I ever crowd surfed. <laughs> have you ever done that? Okay, I have not. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's like. Because that seems like a horrible idea. I mean, it's very 90s. Idea. It's good. I have two, two concerts 
Um, Carly Rae Jepsen at Music Fest. Yeah. Um, that, that was a lot of fun. Kesha at Music uh, Fest. And, and Kesha at, at Music Fest was a lot of fun. And, you, you know, you think there would be jokes, but no, it's not. Like, that was a great thing. I mean, God, like, these are artists who are perf- performing in our town. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Love it. Yeah. Um, she did, uh, Carly Rae Jepsen did, like, a little, um, I don't know, like a two or three song acoustic um, set in the Arts Quest Center, too, like, beforehand, which was, I had to film it for something they were doing, but... Right. Um, just to see that too is just the the contrast of of those things is pretty awesome. It in that time period, uh, around that time period, um, Snoop Dogg played, and my my buddy Matt Blum won the front row couch tickets, and he he was like, George, I want you to you know come with me, uh. And it was the most hilarious thing because people were like, George, how did you get these tickets for free, et cetera, et cetera? I'm like, no, like I genuinely, my friend won them. <laughs> you know, no, no BS. And he invited me there. It's just one of the coolest experiences. Again, why I, I love, you know, this area. I get it. Like the, the larger metropolitan areas have got it, but we've got so many um, good things that are happening now. And I don't know. Yeah. I was blown away. Um, Melvins have played uh, the uh, Music Fest cast yeah! twice. And I'm just like, I would have never, ever. I mean, thrice played Freaking it. Melvins. Yeah, it's just my, so great. My joke was always Gwar, right? Oh, it yeah, just yeah. was kind of like over the, over the top because it was like the, the Gwar. If Gwar will play before I die, I hope. You know, Gwar is going to play Music Fest <laughs> or Music Fest Cafe. Just because they're gonna be in their like eighties yeah. and making money and good for those guys because that's that's awesome and and we should be supporting <laughs> Guar uh, into their um, geriatric years. <laughs> uh, maybe out in the lawn where it's a little bit uh, easier to clean up after. <laughs> so. oh, man. Well, I want like um, the Lehigh River. I'm a big kayaker, yeah. right? Uh, the Lehigh River right there is it's like two feet deep. There'd be no problem in erecting, I say this, right? I have no idea. But erecting some sort of flotation yeah. device to have a band. Oh, my God. And you could anchor it very easily. Uh, we could do that. There you um, go. Just trying to get support from powers of being. Uh, actually, she saw Guar at Crock Rock. And, um, I, and that's, yes. Were you there? And that's why I bring it up. Yes, yes. Yeah. Maybe it's that show. Awesome. My friend, uh, I went with my friend, and um, what's the, that's, that was another one that was just obviously one you never forget. He was like, no, nah, we were kind of in the back. He's like, no, nah, I got to go up front for this. And I'm like, all right, dude, I'll meet you afterwards. And uh, I was standing outside in that, like, side alley uh, looking for him afterwards. I'm like, I don't know where the hell he is. And he's like, yo, Mike. <laughs> and I turn and I don't recognize him because he's literally head to toe, purple and green. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, but like, here's the thing who's next like who's yeah taking that torch so like I, I don't know these things um but like what's fun about guar and why it's a good joke is because they're, they're so beloved and and they do such a good job and it's not it's not bullshit and they're not they're not there to mess things up and guar is having a destructive good time you know and, and you know, seriously, and and hopefully as, as we move forward, there, there's other bands that feel like, well, I, I wish I had that yeah. talent. Maybe Eleven Fest next year. Let's push Josh for it. Josh should be <laughs> the gritty band. I have a gritty match. Oh, yeah. um, all right. So one of the questions I wanted to ask you um since you are a musician and you're also connected to a lot of the music scene here. Um, I know you, you've done a great, uh, did a great piece uh, with Matt at Shards and all that sort of thing. What advice like uh, for like the local bands here, is there like advice that you would have for them to maybe like take well, to the next level? Sure. I mean, first of all, I'm not a musician. I, I enjoy uh, here's something. I'd like to mention before I get to that. 
Yeah, I, I, I taught myself guitar. I enjoy playing guitar. I want my daughter to learn like a lot more and uh, hawk music. Oh, just yeah. moved in next to the yeah. Goot on Linden Street in Bethlehem. And uh, uh, we're going to sign my daughter up some piano lessons. If she doesn't like piano lessons, we're going to try uh, guitar lessons. If she doesn't like those, we'll, we'll move to something else. We, we just want her to give it a shot. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have advice for, like, what advice could I give? I didn't do anything good. I, I would say go to the fun house. Uh, talk to them there. You know, be professional, be polite. Uh, go to places like that and go to go to art class. Interact with me. Hit me up, LV with love. Like if if I can help you out. Uh, but I think that with bands, a lot of things. If you want to play local, hit local. And if you want to hit Spotify and all that stuff, put put the music out there. Like I, I listen to and and consume bands who. Who are from way outside of Lehigh Valley? You know, I don't know if that's helpful. You know, in terms of that band getting audience in their area, but I know that I have purchased stuff from bands that are outside of my area, and, and I enjoy that. So, my advice would be to continue to produce and you know, good stuff. Yeah, and connect with people. I think you're right. That was something like I was saying before. Like, yeah, I mean, just kind of missed out on like new podcast. Yeah, say yes to a podcast. You go. Be your own. Yeah. I'll talk for an hour like this. Yeah, exactly. Um, do you want to touch on the, uh, the piece you did with Matt uh, at Shards a little bit, maybe? I mean, I, I, uh, I hate talking for Matt. Shards' uh, recording studio in South Bethlehem is insane. If you don't know Matt Mulchaney, uh, look him up. Uh, please check out their studio if it's something that he's been oh my god around the nation in terms of recording with people um so yeah if you're somebody who's serious in in, in connecting with somebody um who's recording locally then i would look up matt mulchaney at, at charge recording um what do you think <sighs> So a lot of times for bands, especially too, and I, I just want to kind of get into that a little bit. I know you say like, you're not a musician, which I disagree with. And, but you, you have this really interesting point of view because you're really into it. You're exposed to a lot of it. You know, a lot of these people. Um, and I think it kind of go, can go back to like what you're saying with Lehigh Valley, with uh, Lehigh Valley, uh, with love.com is um, it, I think it, it, there are a lot of connections there. Uh, as far as like a secret to longevity and and working in a collaborative way with people over a long period of time, do you have any um, like tips or anything like that? Because I do feel like that's what happens. A lot. Yeah, yeah, it's like the, the worst tips possible, right? It's like the slow burn is the best. Like the reason that we've been able, I already say this. Um, the reason why Leah Value of Love does well is because it, it's not George Wacker love. Um, you know, people get sick of your shit for a period of time, and you need to re reinvent yourself. And I think that goes for any band. Um, and I and I think that people are appreciative of art, but they can get sick of the things in their face. I, I don't know if I'm making the 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 best uh, thing, but like even for myself, I I try not to, you know get in front of the camera for everything that we can do because there's so uh, number one because nobody wants to listen to it but number two is we have so many good, good things that we're able to do collaboratively with students we just did a, uh we just released a a video about tattoos uh from stephen white who's a temp or a temple student a liberty grad um those kind of things are interesting to me and I, I think from a, a band, I, I don't know. I'm not in a band. I think kick butt, write, write good songs. Yeah. Go to the fun house, play there, look at the wall, and realize that you're not the biggest band. You know, I don't know. Like play those things and do them well. There are, are really good bands locally. A lot of them who you know are investing in their future by just playing out and and, and playing well. Like you, you guys included and and kicking butt. And go into places like, 
like like the fun house um and, and not being worried i guess of being called a sellout if you're playing at the steel center like do it is that a thing i don't know uh, i'm just like giving it like a, a like a i guess a yeah, I hear you. Grievance yeah. period. I don't know. Like, do it. Like, I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. But there's no reason. Like, there's, there's so many good bands that come from the Lehigh Valley, and they hear about them later. Yeah. Like, why not listen to them as the Sokols, yeah. you know? if you, And and Bellwether Ritual, Mike Cunningham, if you're listening, would be a, a perfect opportunity. You know, they do, like, professional uh, wrestling there. Uh, I know. that. I, I was so excited about that. It was that. so weird. I love that shit. Um, yeah, thank, thank you for that, George. Uh, you know, with the sellout thing, too, I think you kind of hit on it before. I think that is just a lot of insecurity, too. You know, it's just a little crab, I, crab in the bucket mentality. Does it exist anymore? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, oh, you know, yeah. Also, you were talking about being collaborative. I think, I mean, if you're looking to grow a business, which is basically, you know, obviously what you're doing, but obviously a band is a business as well. Um, you need to have that team of people and you need to work collaboratively with those people and they need to have their voices be heard and feel like they're invested in it to keep them around and, and want to keep showing up for no money initially and, and do those kind of things and scratch that itch for sure. Listen, it, it, you know, as much as we are digital, if you're into, and I, I'm speaking for you, but like if I was, was in a band again right now it it still feels like that wild west even though everything's so digital uh because yeah you gotta you gotta book that gig at the fun house and you gotta record it on your iphone 5 and whatever you're gonna do and you gotta get that out and make people still care about that and you know the spotify is like hey we're not gonna pay anybody over a, under a thousand yeah, views anymore so how do we yeah and but then and, you know, I think about like how about you know the bands that I have found during COVID that are not from this area. They're from Detroit. They're from the Viagra Boys are from Sweden, oh, okay. I think. And and it, it comes down to being disruptive and good. Oh, oh, that great points there. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, like I don't know this stuff, but I'm just saying. Oh, I think you do. <laughs> These are the bands that seem to be doing well, yes. and they're doing well because they, number one, their music is resonating. But then, on the top of that, they're if you look at the Viagra Boys, like you would think these guys would hate social media, and it still feels like they do. Uh, there's the one, my favorite, one of my favorite songs from is Shrimp Sack. It's called Shrimp Sack, and they're on stage, and he vomits. <laughs> He's like talking about, he's like, and he throws up. And it's so weird, but I will go back to that moment. <laughs> weird. I'll go back to that moment because it's so visceral and real that I want to watch that band again. I know it's like, this will come back to haunt me. But it, it, this is such a really neat moment when he throws up. Um, because I'm like, he's in the, he's in the song. Like he can't be any more invested than I am. Like this is not, not a joke. Uh, so I think, I think what you said there too, uh, which is exactly what happened with you. Um, like when you love something, it uh, it's contagious, man. And like like you said, when you when you came into Lehigh Valley and you started um, Lehigh Valley with love and all that stuff, you can tell you loved it and it was contagious. And that is a big reason why I think things like that catch on. I agree. I mean, if if you don't enjoy where you live or what you do take a spin yeah i don't know yeah fix it i mean <laughs> yeah, i'm not saying it's easy like I, i'm in that boat like things are tough like things are hard um but we live in an area i think that'll that has these awesome things i'm going to cirque cirque de, de soleil at wind creek in mm -hmm. in two weeks i'm going to um um Great Wolf Lodge next week. All these things are within oh, yeah. Yeah. 30, 30 minutes. Um, I don't know. If I, I'm just going to be in a plant. Like, I'm being a very Lehigh Valley pro. No, I love it. If you're bored, if you're bored <laughs> then you're boring. <laughs> right? 
There's my my my, grand, my grandma always said, if you're bored, you're dumb. You're too you're too smart to there be bored. Go. And and I kind of I kind of feel with that. Like there's great bands locally. Um, you guys, you know, Seth Witcher. Uh, there's probably like underground and punk bands oh, I don't even know about yeah. who I should. Uh, and and I get it. Like this is mainstream at this point, but there there's places to go check them out. If people who are listening, if you haven't been to the Fun House or the Sokols, you should Google those places and go. Sure. Uh, in my opinion. Yeah, um, Dave from Chaos Guitars just got um, is going to be booking Jabber Jaws too, so that's going to be like a high, highly curated. Um, he he does a lot of punk and metal, so if you're into that kind of stuff, uh, coming up in the new year, there will be like well once a month shows coming up. You can go check that out there too. Um, that's that's an interesting venue as well. I actually really like it. It reminds me of like this um, this pirate bar in a port or something like that. It's just like this really interesting blend of like, you know, seediness, but coolness. Um, so yeah, definitely one to check out as well. No, and, and those are places that we're, we're lucky to have. Like, I know we joke about um, rock rock, but crap, man. Like, that was it. Like, that was, yeah. And, and, and there's not really a place that, like, does that exist anymore? Is it? Will it ever exist in the future? I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. I think things will be sterilized. We'll see. Um, but it's wild that we had the uh, chance to go to the bathroom and some of those horrible. All right. Well, on that note, that takes us to about an hour. <laughs> uh, you want to plug anything else one more time, or uh... I don't. I, I guys, uh, we have a listen. We're Leah Out with Love. Uh, we have a podcast. Uh, Leah Out with Love podcast. Uh, we're so fortunate to be able to work with so many good partners. And if anybody ever wants to, you know, I don't know, collaborate with us or check us out, please get in touch. Again. Like, this has been fantastic. Thank you for having me on. Oh, well, I mean, we could have probably done another two hours. Uh, no problem. Oh, but, so maybe we'll have to. Yeah. Hey, hey. Yeah. Let me know. I didn't even get to talk to you about the Pussifer stuff uh, really in detail or any of that kind of stuff. So we can save it for next time. But uh, yeah, thank you so much, George, <laughs> for being here. Thank you for uh, everyone else for jumping in um, with you, your comments and questions. And yeah. Uh, we're going to be off next week uh, for Thanksgiving. So I hope you all have a great Thanksgiving and we will catch you on the other side. Thanks, man. Have a good night. Hey, thanks everybody. Yeah. Have a good night. Bye-bye.